I'm Dave Goldfarb. Uh, I'm creative director with The Outsiders. Uh, and uh, yeah, I make, make games occasionally. Damn straight you do. Uh, this is Troy Baker. Troy is a legendary actor of video game and film and TV. What you're about to see here is an exclusive peek of some pre pre alpha gameplay um, of our upcoming game, Metal Hellsinger. The game is about this character, uh, Coin the Unknown, her journey to overturn the, um, the rulership of Hell. She has a number of tools to do that, and one of the main ones is the character that Troy plays, we're calling uh, Paz, who is also sort of a, a weapon, this skull that sort of has this capability to um, harness the power in song. In addition to being the, um, this, uh, this weapon, he's also the sort of narrator of the story. Here's Minerva, otherwise known as Divine Abolisher. The whole thing with this game is that doing actions on beat is rewarding in some fashion. It can increase your score for one thing, but also does stuff like build up your ultimate. Um, also, this is a weird thing, but when you're at like kind of maximum performance, when your multiplier or the tier is at its highest, that's when the, the music builds and builds in terms of like aggression and, and, and uh, fullness, because these are, these are basically layered tracks. So the vocals kick in at this highest level. But I remember when you first talked to me about it, you're like, so we're going to have this mechanic where we're using music. And I was like, oh, cool. And I didn't understand at first what you meant by that. And it wasn't until I actually saw the gameplay. And I almost said, like, dude, that's kind of cool how it actually matches up to where it's like <laughs> in time. And you're like, yeah, that's the whole point of the game. And I was like, oh. Yeah, that's it, dude. It's just wake up. There's a certain rhythm to the way that we play anyway, so leaning into that and creating a mechanic around that, to me, was like, well, yeah, that's what I already do. It's that level of emergence that good games give us when they go, we're going to take what you already want to do, and we're going to build it out and allow you to do more of it. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's like a flow thing. I think when I was um, thinking about the game, long, whatever, four years ago, when it was just a concept, I was like, oh, that's it would be cool to, to do something. Uh, because I was playing, I think I was, I don't remember what I was playing, but I was playing something and listening to Meshuggah, killing stuff in the <laughs> beat, and I was like, this is cool. What I appreciate about this is that, yeah, you've got uh, this cool twist and mechanic as far as like the rhythm and the, and, and the I don't know, how do you want to frame that? It's like the rhythm and the wreckage, you know? You're yeah, well, that's good. But it's it, it doesn't feel tacked on because it feels endemic to the world uh, because yeah. of the way that, and I don't know which came first. If you, if I, it sounds like the mechanic thing came first, and you kind of built the world and the character around that, but it feels like it's 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 um, it makes sense why there's a rhythm as opposed to okay, I just have to have a rhythm because there's always that weird, and we always use this employ this phrase, but ludo narrative dissonance where it's like, well, that I get I get that the world and the character is trying to do that, but the, but there's actually a, a big disconnect between the world that you're presenting me with and the task that you're giving me to do inside of that world. Right. So this to me was like, oh, I understand this is who she is and this is why, and this is why also she vis a vis I am a badass if I continue to do this so well. And it's just that even like the, the UI of it, there's so many things that are encouraging me and, and rewarding me for being a badass. The thing, the game came out of like, a, I knew that I wanted to do that rhythm thing, but then the character of the unknown, like immediately, sometimes you just know. And it hasn't happened to me very often. So would you say the unknown is uh, is uh, kind of still, it, that's the first draft that stuck? Or do you yep. feel like you? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. It's dumb, but as soon as I wrote the name, I wrote the unknown and went, that's it. Wow. And then everything else kind of worked after that. The time between you going, that's it, and actually making it work is usually an extended period uh, of, of suffering. Visions come to prepared spirits. To me, Maybe. that's not just like, oh, I just had this idea for character. It's all the years that you've had as a dev working and understanding character. It has put you in a place to go, 
here it is. It feels momentary and it feels like it came to you almost as a vision. Um, but it's actually all of the years that you have spent um, suffering and failing, developing and understanding and, and world building. Unknown takes the house. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff, like the, the way that the music wound up happening, like in being this crazy dynamic layered thing, you know, all these vocals come in and, and stuff. That actually came a little later. That was not even something that we thought we could get to work. Um, but uh, the audio team, of course, is a bunch of wizards, and then the, the artists themselves are god tier. So, yeah, we, I mean, we, we definitely did a bunch of stuff that we didn't think we'd be able to. I don't know how quickly you assembled this team, but now you've got all of this that's kind of coming together to a, to a thing, and you actually can now pick up a controller and now play. Like, seeing it become tangible has got to feel great. It is, but I've just been working on this thing for 10 months or so, I think. Um, and the idea was just something in the back of my head while I was working on Darkboard, you know, and, I, and, and Darkboard didn't work out. And then I was in this place where it was like, well, we could do this other thing. And we have the knowledge, um, I think, here. Oh, let's give it a shot. <laughs> and then luckily, the team was really good. Basically, they made the best prototype I've ever seen in like two or three months. And it was really clear, like something, there was something there. And I think everybody just kind of placed their bets that we would be able to figure it out because it's new. Like nobody had ever made anything like this of any of us uh, before. We knew how to make shooters, so that's kind of where we landed. Make sure that the shooting is good. Make sure that the movement is good. And we'll figure out the rhythm stuff. Um, <laughs> uh oh, it's time for the actual boss battle. Who will feature Jen Hale? So the Red Judge, what can be said? Well, I mean, I don't want to give anything away. However, she is the she's the primary antagonist, the immovable wall to the unknown's unstoppable force, if Whoa, you will. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joseph Campbell is just applauding. Oh, yeah, right he's now. just right he's exact, oh, don't. <laughs> anyway, so she she's she's bad news. Uh, and she she and the unknown have some kind of history that is or it's unknown. No, no, I'm, I'm joking. But uh, sh she's the primary enemy for the player and uh, features prominently in all of these, uh, kind of all of the hells and all the progression and so on. So I don't want to get on her bad side. And I'm sure Jen Hale will be happy to talk about her at a later date. Jen Hale, you know, uh, uh, for, for all fans of Mass Effect, and this is, by the way, not not hating on uh, Male Shep, but Femme Shep is the way that yeah, I Yeah, she, she no, for me too. Right? It was something new and fresh inside of that genre. And just her performance was like, man, I've, I've, I've had this as the voice of the hero. And so to hear her play, to juxtapose that, to hear her play, a uh, an, an an antagonist, like you said, that the the uh, immovable force is like, yes, <laughs> the nerd in me was like, yay! Yeah, no, it's, it's it's good, and you know she's she's really funny, but she she does the, all these like voices and stuff on the <laughs> whatever we were doing sessions. I've heard, I, I would never guess that it was Jen Hale, and she I mean cute little character voices. That's like the one. Yeah, she would do the cute characters, and I was like, what? I have no idea that came out of it, but her creature sounds are in are, are just amazing. I should have asked her to do creature sounds. I would have called like, her up and be Baker. like, so about these creature sounds that Troy's been talking about. This game, every step of the way, I've just been constantly impressed and excited uh, to not only be a part of this game, 
but for the date when I can actually finally sit down, pick up the controller, and actually play this game. When is that? Oh, wait, I know. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be 2021 at some point. Get us out of this year and let us celebrate this game. <laughs> Seriously, let's just anything to get out of this year. So yes, when we exit this year, your 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 present hopefully will include a vaccine and the release of this product. <laughs> so uh, that would be a hell of a collector's edition, by the way. If this like you, if you get the collector's edition, it also comes with the vaccine. <laughs> this game will literally save your life. <laughs>